How's it going folks? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to look at the top 10 albums that influenced me as a guitar player, as a person, as a metalhead and just pretty much made me who I am and play the way I play. So you're probably thinking I was just going to be a load of bands and uh, albums that you've done loads of covers on and uh, yeah you'd be right it, it pretty much is because that's why we do this isn't it but anyway we will check it out but before we do if you've not subscribed and I know there's a load of you who haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button join the channel help share it about and uh, I'll be eternally grateful because it really does help out so let's just get into this it's in no order in general it's just the 10 albums I that I love and that help influence me as I said so album number one is Pride and Glory by Pride and Glory. Now we all know I'm a massive Zach Bell fan, so it's absolutely no surprise to anybody that this is up there. But, well, this could be maybe the top album of, of mine of all time. It's just got everything in it. It's got big riffs, it's got great singing, it's got banjos, it's got harmonica, it's got piano, it's got ballads, it's got out this world solos. I mean, there's just riffs like this. that I'll just, I mean, it's so southern, it's unbelievable, and I, I just love this album. I will say that when I first heard it, I didn't get into it, because there was a guy in my school who just, every time we were at a party or something, he would just push this album on you and go, oh, you need to listen to this. And then I was just like, man, I just, I just, <laughs> I just it kind of ruined it for me, you know, I was just, I fought against it, no, stop, stop pushing it on me. And then I sat down and I was like, right, I need to listen to this. I listened to it once properly and, I've been hooked ever since. I've, this album is constantly on my Spotify. Just probably the most played album I've ever done in my life. So that is album number one, Pride and Glory. Album number two, Alive or Just Breathing by Killswitch Engage. Again, Killswitch are not a stranger to this channel. I have covered probably more of their songs than anybody else's. They're just, I just love them. I love them to bits. But I remember we were watching Krang or Scuzz uh, on Bernie's uncle's house, I think it was. And uh, my last, my last cell Ned came on, and that first riff came on, and I was just like, <laughs> so heavy, and I was just right into it, like, just Pantera grooves, and then just Jesse's vocals came in, and they were again heavier than pretty much what I used to, I was used to listening to, uh, and I was like, oh, this is so cool, man, and it's so cool. And then the vocals came in for the, the verse, and the verse was massive, and I was just like, man, these guys are unbelievable. I hadn't really heard anything like it before. This is my last this was before, like, uh, like the new wave of uh, American heavy metal hit over here, the metal core from back in the day, and um, really came over here, so I was just kind of blown away. And then we were drinking that night, and I forgot all about them. So, <laughs> it wasn't until must have been a, a, later on that year, a year later or something, a guy from One More Old Works I had bought the album, didn't like it and gave it to me and I was like, who are these guys? Kind of recognised the name, wasn't 100% sure and they uh, stuck it on and a number of days came on and I was just like, oh, man, oh, what a song, that intro and I was just like racking my brain. It's like, I just, I know, I know this guy's voice, I know it, I just know it. And then obviously as I listened to it, my last sermon they came on and I was just like, oh, I found this band again, I found them. Oh. And then that's it, ever since I've loved them, I absolutely loved them. So Alive or Just Breathing, the band I had at the time, we all got into heavily into that album and changed our whole band uh, from a pure southern rock band and we tried to be this kind of metalcore band, but it never really panned out. But man, I just right away I was like, man, I, I want to play this kind of stuff because it's just epic. Album number three is a Burn My Eyes by Machine Head. Again, this album, when it came out, was just like one of the heaviest things I'd ever heard in my life. It was just unbelievable. I remember sitting in my pal's back garden at school and they had the cassette tape for old and we just played old over and over and over again. <laughs> It was so heavy, it was so raw, it was so pissed off sounding. And the guitar tone was bigger and heavier than anything we knew back then. I mean, I think they probably, I'm probably shot for this, but the pioneers of the 5150 sound because Burn My Eyes was just unbelievable. 
it's just a massive and old was so good and then we got to Division and that that drum fill at the beginning. I mean it's just iconic. That drum fill was just absolutely iconic. So that starting off the album we first we got the album after obviously hearing old and then it was just I was just blown away by the heaviness and like I said, how raw and pissed off they sounded on it. So I, that was that was pretty much burned eyes for me. I was just on a, a, a thing of going, this album made me want to go heavier, listen to heavier stuff from what I was back then, you know. So burned my eyes, definitely a, a gateway to me going, let's let's listen to heavy shit. <laughs> so album number four, to tie in with number three, is The Blackening by Machine Head. Again, this was an album that when it first came out, I, kinda, I hadn't fallen off the Machine Head train. I kind of still liked all the burning red stuff and that, but when this came out, it made me just go, Christ, they're back, they're pissed again, and they, they just the guitar work in that album blew me away, like the harmonies and aesthetics to hate, and just like the big slow riff in Halo. All that stuff is just completely different to what they used to do. They'd obviously touched on it in uh, Thrashes to the Empire, but for me it was just like, my god, this is so good. And I was in a band at the time called Forever Void who were very kind of disturbed in mainstream rock, and I was just like, I want to change what I'm doing, and I want to play this kind of stuff. More technical, just heavier, still get heavy, heavy groove, but I just, I just felt like that's the way I had to go. It was the first album in a long, long time that had really kind of reached out and grabbed me and, and made me go, this is what I was looking for. It'd been a long time since I felt that and The Blackened did that. So The Blackened holds a, a really, really like close place to my heart because it definitely changed where I was in life guitar-wise because I don't think, I think if that album didn't come out, I wouldn't play half the stuff that I play now. Uh, I think I'd still be doing in a more mainstream kind of metal band. Um, but I have got a kind of mainstream metal band, but I think that would have always been my path. But that's now I do it. I've got a heavy band and a mainstream band, and I think that's all thanks to the Black Moon. Album number five is Good Old Appetite for Destruction. You know, heard it when I was a kid. Can't remember what age I was. It must have been, I don't know. Eight, nine, nine, something like that, I don't know, I can't remember when they came out. But I, so, I show, show my age, uh, I, so I was a kid and I remember my friend getting a loan of the tape off of his cousin and playing it, and he didn't really like it. I remember I kind of sitting there going, this is kind of cool, it's kind of not what I used to listen to. Uh, and then getting, me, I borrowed the tape off and I was like, can I take this up the road and listen to it? So I took it, I took it home and then just had it on and just, was just blown away by it. Again, it was like, I had never listened to anything that kind of angry and raw sounding and just pissed and I just, I was like, man, this is just so cool. It just did something to me. I was just like, oh man, this is amazing. And obviously you've got the iconic, like, Sweet Child of Mine intro. <laughs> that everybody knows and everybody loves. And you say you don't, because it's cliche, but you do, everybody loves it. You know, I had that and you had just some amazing guitar solos. Like, I've always loved like Night Train, even though it's more simplistic. But I've always loved that solo. It's just really, really cool. And I've always loved that song. And just, there was other songs in there that just kind of, My Michelle, and just Rocket Queen as well, just grabbed me and I was just had, I'd never listened to anything before. So it was that album made me go, I want to do this. I want to pick up guitar and I want to play this stuff. So thanks to Guns N' Roses and Slash, you need to sit through my drivel so you can blame them. But I, I think the destruction, I think it's probably a gateway album for a lot of people who play rock and metal guitar. And it certainly was that one album for me that made me want to play guitar. Album number six, six, whatever you want to do, six. Album number six is Andy James by Andy James. This was the first album I think that I ever bought 
that was an instrumental album. Uh, I remember, I think it was on EMG TV, see him play Angel of Darkness. <laughs> And was just what who is this guy like I, i've never heard him before and just sat there and watched it and i was just jaw dropped and i was like how is somebody playing that clean that fast some amazing riffs as well it wasn't just shred stuff just some epic riffs and i was just like man this is this is something else compared to what i was used to i mean i've been i'd been thinking half for excuse me probably nearly 20 years at the time by the time I knew Andy James and uh, I was just blown away just absolutely blown away by his playing and it made me do a deep, deep dive into what Andy James is about and especially that album it was just the phrasing and some of the, the parts the melodies he had the shredding parts and his riffs but these were all songs that were cohesive songs like the guitar just took over from the singing it wasn't just shredding for the sake of shredding it was all cohesive songs and it was the first album that got me properly into instrumental music like i listen to like angel vivaldi and nita strauss and that now and I, I don't think i would ever listen to them properly if it wasn't for that andy james album he's, he's brought out some other amazing albums since then and also I, it got me into his band sacred mother tongue as well because sacred mother tongue were just amazing uh, just got a, got a chance to uh, support them luckily uh, on, their, on their final tour and, and meet Andy they've met Andy a couple of times and he's a, a lovely lovely lad uh, and I'm, I'm so happy to see how who like big he's got and how well he's doing with uh, Five Finger Death Punch but Andy James Andy James if you're not in, into instrumental music but you're into guitars just go and check that album out it's fucking phenomenal Angel of Darkness uh, Separation, Gateways, I can't remember the other, some of the other names, but just the songs are so good. It is, to me, the pinnacle of guitar shred music. It's probably quite a phrase, but for me, that's what it is. Album number seven is Blackbird by Alter Bridge. Now, the first album came out and I was, I was a Creed fan. Hands up, I don't care. I'm a Creed fan. I love Creed. Uh, the first album, Alter Bridge album, came out and I really, really enjoyed it, but I did think a lot of it sounded like some throwaway Creed stuff. Uh, obviously there's songs on it that were, uh, they're starting to get their sound, but it wasn't until Blackbird, I think, that they found their sound because Miles started playing guitar properly with them as well and writing stuff and writing solos and Blackbird, to me, is just one of the best rock albums ever written. Miles' voice is unbelievable in it. Unbelievable. Still think he's one of the best rock singers out there. Uh, and uh, Miles, uh, Mark's guitar work, sorry. It's just amazing. Like the intro for Blackbird. It, it just gives me chills every time I hear it. It's absolutely iconic. It's one of the nicest and most epic songs. I've ever heard in my life. It's just amazing. And the solos in the middle of that just are just mind blowing. And it's the two styles from Miles again and Mark playing off each other. Just superb. Then you've got some quality heavy riffage like ties it bind. And uh, white knuckles, just fast riffs that are great and heavy and fun. And I definitely think this was the album that they found their sound on and started uh, changing and, and getting bigger from that. I think Blackbird hadn't happened, I don't think Alter Bridge would have been half as big as they are now and they are massive. But I love that album, it's amazing. Again, it'll hold a, a big part of my heart because it made me, even though I was wanting to play heavier stuff, it wanted me to bring the, those melodies and those softer parts into those songs as well, just so I had better dynamics. So album number eight is from the local band, the local boys, Bleed From Within, and it is the album Error. Now, that's E-R-A, not Error. It's just my accent. E-R-A, Error. Uh, I, I, I love Bleed From Within. They are by far one of my favourite bands of all time now. Um, the last few albums I've done, four albums, five albums I've done, I think five albums I've done, have just been phenomenal. 
I wasn't a massive fan of the earlier stuff, like the album Humanity and the other one, I can't remember, because it was more death, metal deathcore kind of stuff, and it didn't really do much for me, but I knew they were big on the Glasgow scene, I knew they were doing good things, so I always kind of had an eye on them. It wasn't until they brought out the album Uprising that I started going, oh, what are these guys doing? That's just phenomenal. Um, it had that groove to it now and just the production was way bigger and I was just like, yeah, this is cool. I'm checking this out. So off from that album, they obviously brought out Era and uh, just songs like Afterlife. And the uh, Bed of Snakes, like that chorus in Bed of Snakes is just... Mm. That album like, had it on religiously, absolutely religiously, when they had it, when they um, when they brought it out. I had never heard a band do melody and heaviness the way they did on this album. It was just completely different from anything else that they had done. And it was a, such a massive step up. Even from Uprising, I think, it was a, such a massive step up. And I think Stephen coming into the band really helped that because his sense of melody and clean vocals and, and all that kind of stuff helped bring that band into another level. Just such a phenomenal album. Not a bad song on it. In fact, a couple of the B-sides that were on it, I, was just, I don't understand why they weren't on the album because they were just phenomenal. But I, Era by The Bleed From The Thin Boys is um, just an ultimate album. It just, it, it, I don't think you can explain, you can ever explain the words to somebody that when an album t like just grabs you that, that way, that it just, it makes you so happy. And every time you hear it, it just takes you back to that place when you first heard it. And it just, just goosebumps again, man. Here, standing up, just thinking about it. Just, what an album. Well done, boys. Well done. So, album number nine is Vulgar Display of Power by Pantera. I mean, we cannot leave Pantera off this list. We just can't. Pantera and Dimebag has been such a massive influence on me and my playing. That southern stuff, but keeping it heavy, it's, it's what I... I try to do a lot. I, I always want to have groove, but have heavy riffs. I just it feels you can you can make stuff as heavy as you want, but if there's no groove to it, I, it doesn't do much for me, you know. So, Volus of Power for me was a band at their peak, doing that. But that and Far Beyond Driven, a band who just killed it, getting heavy riffs but groovy as hell. I mean, we all know Walk. To me, it's just riffs like uh, regular people. Try that again. It's just riffs like regular people. <laughs> that just, that just show how how heavy and riffs can be and groovy and and simple. Because walk is the simplest riff ever. Everybody knows it, and it's the mo one of the most iconic metal riffs ever written. So I Pantera, Phil's vocals sounded great. Vinny was playing amazing drums. Rex was just, I mean, some of the bass lines behind the solos are just unbelievable, unbelievable. And it was them, like, just the, I just think Pantera have always done really well with just doing their own thing and not following the masses and the vulgar display of power. I think at the time when that came out, was pushing against all the thrash stuff that was still going and uh, just doing their own thing. And I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it because it was, as much as I love thrash and I love headbanging and stuff, Vulgar Slipper will just make you want to move because the songs are just groovy as all hell. Cowboys from hell. Oh, cheesy, cheesy, Greg. Don't, oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. Album number 10 is Master of Puppets. Yeah, we had to get Metallica in here at some point, didn't we? Master of Puppets, I think, is probably the obvious choice, but I think, like everybody else, I feel like it's, it's one of the most influential metal albums ever written. It's just everything about that album, how tight it is, how good it sounds, the, the songs on it, even though the long don't feel long, which is, to me is a sign of a great songwriting. And it's just stuff like, you know, the bass roll from Orion. It just shows Cliff's knowledge of theory and 
the wee kind of harmony bit that goes after it. It's just unbelievable. It's such a good song, and there's just some absolute dynamite riffs on there. Do you know what I mean? We, we all know them and we, we all love them and we, we all... I don't think there's anybody in metal who doesn't know three or four songs of Master of Puppets. You just you have to. Everybody knows Master of Puppets. Everybody knows Battery. Everybody knows that bass bit in the Ryan. Do you know? It's just everybody knows that album pretty much back to front and it is just an absolute classic. And Kirk's solos on it are amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so yeah, Master of Puppets number 10. So that's it, that's the 10 albums that helped kind of shape me and uh, made, me, made me the person, guitar player, metalhead that I am today. But I found it really hard to do 10, so I'm going to give five honourable mentions because these albums are just pretty much up there as being as influential to me than the ones I mentioned. And that was Seven Dust Animosity because it was just heavy and groovy and Lejeune's lyrics were just so, so good. Like they're just Lejeune has got a voice that just messes with me because I love it. I love his voice. Uh, Rust in Peace by Megadeth, a thrash classic, and just the riffs in there. And I think it's the best vocal wise that Dave Mustaine's ever done. But the riffs on there are amazing. The solos by Marty. I mean, everybody knows it's a Nero soul solo. <laughs> Phenomenal, I was going to swear there, I'm trying not to swear. It's just so good, and everybody knows, like, Marty, Marty Friedman was just unbelievable. Him and Nick Menza, just, what, that was me that was Megadeth's best, best lineup ever, we have to say it. Sacrament by Lama God, another amazing album. It was a band, it was a band. It was the album that got me into Lama God and the grooves and the heaviness, but wasn't as influential as me as stuff like Bold Square Power. Deliverance by Corrosion, often for me, was another one that was massively, massively, I <laughs> cannot speak, massively influential. Again, just Southern Grooves. I love a Southern Groove. I love a Southern Groove. And no one really did it better than Deliverance by Corrosion, often for me. And last but not least, Conclusion of an Age by Silosis. What an album. I remember, I didn't really get into them till quite late. I think they were just bringing out Monolith from that style to get into them. And uh, I was so surprised that people were still tuned to E Standard and still playing, still making everything that sound heavier than everything else that was out there. And that tight, and Josh's playing is just unbelievable. Uh, Jamie's vocals on it are tremendous. Uh, but I, like I said, the, the guitar work on that album was so good, and I was so surprised it was an E Standard because it sounded so heavy. And I was like, who plays like this? And now I am. Josh, he's the biggest fan ever. No, probably not, because I know some other guys who are by far a bigger fan of Josh than I am, but I, I love Josh another one. He is so good and has definitely helped me try and be a better guitar player, because the stuff I try and cover, I try and cover some of stuff, it's just so tough all the time. So yeah, there you go, five honourable mentions. So that's it guys, thanks very much for tuning in. What were your favourite albums? Any of the ten that were on mine, or the five honourable mentions, are they in your top ten? arms that influence you to do what you do or just whatever and uh, as always if you liked it please press like down the video if you want any other videos like this let me know as well in the comments and if you've not subscribed please subscribe to the channel and uh, check out some other videos uh, and we'll do more stuff like this and we'll do more covers and we'll do other good stuff and I will see you again for another one. See ya!